We've recently posted a review of this drive. This is the Solidine P5430, their next generation QLC Enterprise NVMe SSD. Now that's a mouthful, but it's really important to highlight all of the components about this drive, and QLC is one of the big parts that separates this from other drives in the Enterprise. The P5430 is a follow-on to this drive, the P5316. While it has an Intel label, this is also a Solidime drive. And for those of you that aren't up on all the transitions that have gone on, SK Hynix basically picked up the storage assets from Intel, formed a new company, and there you have Solidime. All the legacy Intel products will still carry Intel stickers for the remainder of their lives. That's also why Solidime is so excited about the P5430. It's the first of their enterprise SSDs to carry the purple label. The P5430 is a nice progression over the P5316. This guy gets 192 layer NAND. That's the latest generation QLC NAND uh, that Solidime can package in a drive. That's up from the 144 in the P5316. This also has a new controller, new firmware, and importantly, a newer, smaller indirection unit. So one of the unique aspects of QLC drives, especially with the P5316 when this came out, is that this comes out in a 30.72 terabyte capacity. It's huge, and when they designed the drive, they had to make a decision about the right indirection unit size for this drive. And that's basically the file size in which the drive is most optimized for reads and writes. In the 5316, it was a 64K indirection unit. And that's fine, but it just means that for software to interact with a drive that has a 64K indirection unit, they've got to be a little smarter. They've got to coalesce writes so that they're not hitting the drive with a bunch of excess write amplification. And when we look at hypervisors, for instance, like VMware, what we see is that they write and read mostly in 4K units. So when you have a 64K indirection unit, that makes it really hard for the hypervisor to work with this drive efficiently. In fact, the 5316 isn't on the vSAN certified list and isn't really something that VMware wants to support. That changes though with the 5430. So what this guy's got is a 4K indirection unit in the small capacities and at the 30 terabyte capacity, it uses an 8K indirection unit. This makes the P5430 an easy drop-in replacement for almost all enterprise workloads, especially those around hypervisors. Now, I mentioned capacity a couple times. This drive tops out at 30.72 terabytes, just like the P5316 before it. Uh, this does come in a number of form factors, though, which is really interesting. I'm holding the standard 15 mil U.2 case here that most enterprise servers know and love but they also make this in an E3.S. Now that's really cool because that's the EDSFF next generation form factor, which we've been talking a lot about lately, and it's only 7.5 millimeters tall in Z height. Solidime's going to make this drive into a seven and a half mil form factor that still will have a 30.72 terabyte capacity. Why is that important? That's because you can take two of those E3.S drives to take up the same Z height as this drive. In this drive, there are two boards inside that are sandwiched together that get you to that 30.72 terabyte capacity. A single board in the E3.S will get you there too, and that's pretty amazing. And that's one of the big benefits of the new QLC NAND, the 192 layer, where you get so much more density on a single board. This will also be available in an E1S form factor for the hyperscalers. That one will top out in the 15 terabyte class. The whole time I've been talking, I've had this third drive in my hand, and this one, as you may know, is the Micron 6500 Ion. We also have reviewed this, we've got a video on it as well, and Micron launched this specifically in one capacity at 30.72 terabytes to go kill the P5316. And what Micron did was, they said, hey, market, we're gonna price this thing at identical pricing as the P5316, but we're gonna give you TLC NAND and TLC NAND performance. In the review of this drive, as you saw, it does pretty well. That said, it's gonna be really interesting to see if Micron can follow through with that pricing threat because this drive's been out for a long time, the NAND's well established. And that said, on the same day that Micron went for the kill shot on the P5316 with their own 6500 ion, that's the same day the P5430 launched it with a brand new performance profile that beats P5316 pretty much everywhere and does a really good job especially considering the benefits that QLC offers from density and pricing. As we take a look at some of the key performance benchmarks, the random 4K read is where we start. Here the P5430 had uh, just under a million IOPS. 
It's interesting because when you compare it to the 15.36 terabyte version of the P5316, it's well ahead, and it even bests the 30 terabyte capacity 5316 by a pretty good margin, settling in not too far from the Micron 6500 ion. Random write 4K is where we really see the effects of the change of indirection unit come into play. So I had mentioned that earlier, and no chart shows it more visually and more clearly than why you want to have a smaller indirection unit on these drives, if at all possible. Uh, here, the 5430 kind of lies flat in relative uh, nature here with the 6500 ion, and the two 5316s really show where they struggle with the small block random writes, which is really just about the worst possible case workload for these QLC drives. Looking at sequential read 64K, so going larger block, the P5430 does okay here, uh, falling in a little bit behind its predecessors though, which were clearly optimized with the 64K indirection unit. As we switch over to 64K writes though, it shows a much better performance profile than the prior drives and actually hangs at a lower latency than the Micron drive for a little while, although clearly the TLC NAND is superior in that particular workload. One of the other really interesting charts is if we take a look at the mixed workload SQL chart, we can see again another spot where the P5430 really outshines and outclasses the P5316 and hangs pretty well with the TLC competitor. Same thing goes when we look at Oracle workloads. Uh, the, the P5430 really shows great strides and keeps a pretty nice and tight chart next to the 6500 ion. So overall, we really love the P5430. Seeing Solidime now, after we've been working with them extensively for the last couple of years, to show up with a purple uh, sticker on it is pretty fun. I'm sure they're pretty happy about it. Uh, we've had a great time with this drive and really are excited for not just this drive in the larger capacity as it comes out later this year, but I'm super pumped for the E3.S. I really want to see that 7.5 millimeter, 30 terabyte drive. I think that has the potential to really shake up the storage server and server industry to be able to get that much capacity into these things. If you look at what Supermicro has done with the E3.S, if you look at what uh, HPE is doing in their Electra 4110, and even their hybrid storage servers where they're putting 16 E3S bays on the back, there's so much potential there to bring tremendous capacity and performance to a wide number of use cases, whether it's server, whether it's server storage or software defined, there's so much action happening. So the fact that uh, Solidime's back with the P5430, if Micron's out there with the 6500 ion fighting, all of this is good news for enterprises that are looking for more options, more cost-effective options, and more performance options when it comes to their storage needs. At the end of the day, all of the competition is great for the enterprise. There are going to be more choices, more cost-effective choices, more performance, more capacity. Everything is trending the right way, and it's very exciting uh, to be a part of it. We've got a full review on this drive on the website. I'll link to that in the description below. Thanks for tuning in.